The next important point we need to cover is the definitions and use of total or stagnation conditions. These two terms are often used interchangeably in the literature. So if we go back to our incompressible flow and recall the definition of stagnation pressure, that's the pressure at a point where the velocity is zero. So if we consider we have a streamline and we've got some fluid element in here, it's got density rho, temperature T, pressure P, Mach number M, and velocity V, then these three are static quantities. What does that mean? It means that this is what you would measure if you were riding along with that velocity V. Now, if we slow the fluid down adiabatically to zero velocity, So therefore, we're not doing any heat transfer during that deceleration process. Then the temperature that we get after bringing the fluid to rest in that manner is what we call the total or stagnation temperature. Sometimes you only see it denoted T naught. Usually, I'll use subscript T, TT. And we have a corresponding enthalpy H naught or HT, which is the total stagnation enthalpy. So for our calorically perfect gas, we get that the stagnation enthalpy is CP times the stagnation temperature. The key here is that we don't actually have to have this process going on to be able to talk about these total quantities. They're conceptual ideas that are very useful for analysis. So at any point in the flow, you can imagine the temperature and enthalpy you would get if you took the flow at that point and decelerated it adiabatically to zero velocity. So we can define the total uh, enthalpy and temperature anywhere in the flow. Okay, now let's consider the energy equation. And so if we assume that the flow is adiabatic and that there are negligible body forces, so basically no heat transfer and uh, neglecting gravitational effects, then what we're left with is rho times the substantial derivative of E plus one half V squared equals negative grad dot PD. Now if we manipulate the right hand side with the following vector identity, then what we can get by recalling continuity, which is d rho dt plus rho grad v equals zero, grad dot v equals zero. And if we also use that rho times the substantial derivative of p over rho is d p dt minus p over rho d rho dt. And if we put this definition of d rho dt in here and put it all together into a single equation, what we get is this d rho dt equals dp dt 
plus p grad dot v. And this is equal to the PVT plus V dot grad P plus P grad dot V. And if we use this and the vector identity that I wrote down a moment ago in the energy equation, what we get is a very large equation that looks like this. E plus the over rho plus v squared over 2 equals negative p grad dot v minus v dot grad p plus the p v t plus v dot grad p plus p grad dot v. Now this looks complicated and not very useful, but this can be greatly simplified if we note that e plus p over rho is e plus pv which is just our definition of enthalpy. So putting that in and simplifying, we get something that's a little bit more manageable looking. So this is now our form of an energy equation. And for steady flow, what this tells us is that h plus v squared over 2 is a constant because there's obviously no time varying pressure in a steady flow. So this is just the total enthalpy. This is the sum of the enthalpy and the kinetic energy and in a steady flow it's adiabatic and in viscid it's constant. So if we go back to the equation in the box here um, we also get that, so we can write rho dht dt equals dp dt. So what this says is that an unsteady pressure change is required to change the total enthalpy. Now this result is not all that useful for external aerodynamics, but it's a fundamental reason that all turbo machinery, like compressors, fans, and turbines, have rotating blades. Only by unsteadily varying the pressure can work be done on the fluid, and thus the total enthalpy be changed. Now, for external aerodynamics, typically all the streamlines originate from some uniform free stream. So usually, the stagnation enthalpy is a constant for all streamlines. So since then, there's no mechanism for these to change if the flow is steady, the stagnation enthalpy is a constant for the entire flow, for steady, adiabatic, inviscid flow with a uniform in inflow or upstream flow condition. So this is a very simple and useful form of the energy equation that applies to most external aerodynamics problems. And remember that since for a calorically for perfect gas, HT is CPTT, then we can say actually that just the stagnation temperature is constant throughout the flow field. Now I just want to re-emphasize that these definitions of total enthalpy and temperature are conceptual and they apply at every point in the flow regardless of whether the flow is actually inviscid and adiabatic. The simplified form of the energy equation that just says that the total enthalpy is constant or that the total temperature is constant applies only to an inviscid, steady, and adiabatic flow.